What's really going on, everyone? Back again with another episode. Like I said, we've been beginning the season. We're taking a little break from kind of the entertainment stuff, really focusing on music. Uh, and this artist who we have, I teased last week and we finally got it confirmed. He's probably been one of my favorite artists since the pandemic started. Uh, he just came out with a new album called Some People Scream, Some People Talk. It is the one and only Wakai from Baton Rouge. So Wakai, what's going on? What's good, brother? I'm glad <laughs> I could be here. I'm on it. Yeah, no. So I think uh, before we recorded, we were just talking about how you just uh, came back from L.A. So what's been the response to the album? What's been the feedback you've been getting? It seems like the streams have been going crazy. So just tell people like what yeah. it's like just to kind of go through like that first 24 hours and then that first week after you drop the album. I mean, honestly, I feel like making an album is like having a kid. It's kind of like you put it like you put it into the universe and it's like regardless of how you tried to cultivate it or nourish it, yeah. eventually it's going to be judged. Like it's just going to be judged. So it's kind of like once I it finally came out, it was almost like a surreal feeling because it's like, all right, I've invested so much energy and so much time mm -hmm. into this for it being my thing. And now it's right. not just my thing. Like it's for everybody who listens to it and like, however they, whatever their interpretation of it is. But I don't know, like, at the listening party, it was a beautiful experience. Like, I feel like people was uh, fucking with it for the most part, you know? Yeah, um, that's what really struck me about, like, just before we talk about, like, what you talk about on the album and the themes, like, the title alone really struck me in terms of some people scream, some people talk. Um, how did you end up with that as the title for the album? Because it seems like there's a lot to that that we probably don't know. Right. All right. So initially, when I was making the project, I was going to have it be named. Some people scream, some people cry, some people talk. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, that's that's too long. That's too long for it. I had to condense it or whatever. But I honestly, every project that I make is based from a poem. But last mm -hmm. project, it was based on another poem someone else wrote that was called To a Dark Girl. And then I named mm -hmm. it To a Dark Boy. Really? But, this time I was just writing different poems throughout uh, making the project. And then I wrote a poem that had a part where it was like, some people scream, some people talk. And then I was like, this is, this would be a crazy, like, yeah. this, this a crazy album. Man. I got, I, I got one. Yeah. yeah. Like I ended up working out. Cause I mean, it's, it's 16 songs. So it's split into uh, two halves. Like the first half is the scream mm -hmm. half. The second half is the talk half. Which which person did you when you were making this? Obviously, I didn't know that you obviously had that some people scream, some people cry, some people talk. Do you identify yourself as the screamer or the talker, or is it kind of like at some point you're one and at some point you're another? Or yeah, well, I think um in the process of me making the project, it was more so me reflecting on the times in life, certain situations where I felt like I wanted to scream and I couldn't scream, or even mm -hmm. other situations that kind of parallel that where. I would physically scream in certain arguments or physically scream out of emotion that was suppressed. And I didn't know how right. to like talk it out or like talk it out in the most conducive way for like whatever the situation would be. So I think, I feel like, I mean, we we, we all share both sides mm -hmm. of it, but I yeah. do think uh, I wanted the intro to be more, well, like the stream side to be more of a perspective of how I felt speaking mm -hmm. firsthand like certain situations that I was going through. I don't think I screamed myself in situations anymore, but there were times where I, like, I wanted to put the listener in the passenger seat of me feeling that emotion, like, fully. Like, you know, me being right. really just Yeah, and I think it's funny that you actually mentioned the first track because um, one thing that kind of drove me to you back in the, during the pandemic when I was listening to all your stuff with Wave uh, was the production. Like, what goes into your process of, like, selecting beats? And even on the first track, you know, as someone who's like does deep dives on SoundCloud, I've long been a fan of like CD and Styles Davis. So when I saw that they right. were on the joint, I was like, right. "Whoa!" <laughs> like, so how did you end up like connecting with them, and what was it like working with them? But like, what goes into your overall process when you're selecting beats? Well, I mean, I'm a I'm a beat head for sure. Like, yeah. beats first. Like, I, I'm damn near like I don't know. I just feel like I'm cut from that cloth of really caring about production like a lot. Like. Anybody will tell you, like, Wave or anybody that I work closely with knows I'm big on energy and I'm big on movement. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not moved by the beat. I'm not going to hop on it. Like, and it's yeah. like, I've had sessions with, like, with great, crazy producers. Like, I'm talking about, like, like Grammy-nominated producers. But it's like, if I'm not moved, I'm not moved. Like, my spirit got to move by the rhythm that I feel, you know, because I'm just channeling. So I'm yeah. big on beat. I guess when I'm picking something, I'm picking something that moves me the most. And also, I kind of feel like, I damn near 
I don't know. I can't help it. It's like majority of the time I pick the beats that most people don't go towards. Even though like yeah. like generally people will like like the beats that I pick. I, I damn near like if I'm getting something from somebody, it's probably the one that everybody passed on. Those are the beats that yeah. I like the most. And I don't know why they resonate me with some. That's just how it's kind of always been, you know? Yeah, because one thing, especially I think, you know, you and Wave have developed that connection where it's like I can't see anyone else really hopping on a beat like that because I haven't Right. Heard someone be like, you know what, this beat is kind of off. It doesn't really like the claps aren't normal. So like, was there yeah. anyone when you were coming up who you were like, oh, this person's beats like inspired me to rap the way I do, or was there someone who you were like, this is the production that I want to mirror? <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, uh, it really started when I found knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think knowledge was the beginning. Knowledge was the beginning for me, at least. I feel like mm -hmm. when, when I first heard knowledge, I was just like, this producer was made for me like literally yeah. like, like, like not not in the way where it's like uh i own like i own him and he's uh i'm the only person that should be on his production but i kind of felt like this was the first time someone sonically fully resonated with the style of production that yeah. i always longed to hear or like i always longed to see like it was knowledge at first i mean of course and then I, a lot of people that i've seen on uh Bandcamp and like soundcloud people like debbie i see uh e1 yeah. tech loon um, low vibe. Uh, stolen drums. Like, like it was a lot. It was a lot of people. It was a lot of people that uh impacted me at a very young age. And I had a close friend. He's also an artist. His name's Duno. Me and him would just like be at lunch looking for beats. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah. like this. This is like sophomore year, junior year of high school. Like it was like certain people that. I don't know, like, that was the time I got my first setup when I was 14. So it's kind of like 14, 15. That's when I was really digging for beats and I didn't have beats. But these were the ones that I was writing to the most. So I was yeah. always going to have, like, a soft spot in my heart because those were... When I recorded, I didn't want beats that sounded like everybody else's. But at the same yeah. time, really, like, my flow was just... I don't know. I feel like I needed something that was different, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you. Because I remember when I was first, like, catching up on, like, Obliv and, like, all those dudes, it was, like, right. on God's, it was, like, on God's Connect, like, YouTube channel. And it was, like, nobody else was, like, listening to stuff like that at the time. So I could see how, like, that made you feel like it was different. I'm like, I can totally understand that. Bro, I'm still trying to get on that page, bro. They got to show me some love. Nah, That's like, they falling off. You know? That's, like, some bucket list shit for me. Yeah, no, for real. So I think one thing that I've always been fascinated by is just you being from Baton Rouge where obviously there's, you know, there's a developing scene in Baton Rouge, but like, what does Baton Rouge and like home mean to you? Because I think throughout the time that I've heard you rap, there always seems to be like a kind of like a conflict between a nostalgia and a love for the city of Baton Rouge, but also an awareness of, you know, people who you know who haven't made it out or people who are no right. longer with you. So can you talk about kind of like that conflict and that tension? Because it seems like in one place, you really love this place. Yeah. But in another place, you're like aware of like just what happens there. Yeah, honestly, I think the the best way I've described like my relationship, well, currently like my mind frame of how mm -hmm. I look at books is like the song Bittersweet. Like I like that is like yeah. the, the most vivid, the most vivid uh way I could portray Baton Rouge from the perspective of like, I don't know, somebody who lives here who is just like I would I just was cool with everybody. So it's kinda like mm -hmm. if you cool with everybody, if you hang out with everybody, you gonna see multiple sides of a city. Yeah. And it's, the smaller city, it's like you're gonna run into the same people. Same people. You're about to run into you. You're about to run into the same functions, and you know how that yeah. is. So I was like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like when I was making that song, I guess I have a bittersweet relationship with it because it's like on one end, I know the beautiful parts of the city that within me I thrive because I came from here. But it's also sides where it's like it's just it, it's a bitter like feeling because the lack of resource and the reasons like yeah. why people end up having a certain mentality and a certain mind frame to not think bigger than their environment because the environment is physically so small. Like, so I see a lot of yeah. things like somebody that I'm, uh, somebody that I grew up with that I'm close with, I literally just see an article of him arrested for a, a crazy, like some, yeah. some it's, like, it's, it's like a crazy like murder thing or whatever, but it's like, I literally just talked to this dude like mm -hmm. maybe two months ago and he seemed like he was in hot spirits and it's like, just like that, something so quick. It all turns like, around alter somebody's life like so it's kind of like I, I have a bittersweet relationship for it because it's like i know i want to help here but i have to leave here at the same time yeah. like, I, think I wouldn't if i had a child right now i would not raise them here you know i, I would consciously right. make them to leave sooner you know 
Yeah, because I think one thing you mentioned bittersweet is the thing that I had noticed was on the end of sweet tea. You know, you talk about like being better than a place that you grow from. And I can imagine that that must be hard for you to kind of have to, like you said, you're kind of the observer, you're cool with everybody. That must be hard to have to feel like, hey, for me to kind of reach this point, whether personally, musically, professionally, you kind of have to leave. Like that has to be hard, <laughs> I can imagine. It's a, I don't know. It's a pill, it's a pull and tug type thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You gain, I think I, I was so cool with being so different from what was around me. I don't, it's mm -hmm. not like, like a niche thing. Like, like the style yeah. of beast, I like, I, I like it because it's like, that's the only thing that made me feel comfortable around a lot of things that made me feel uncomfortable, you know? So I was yeah. like, that's the place for me. So I was kind of like, I don't know, I appreciate that I wasn't born in New York or that I wasn't born in LA because I have a different mind frame and, I think my appreciation would be a little different for like the small things that I get through music. Yeah. No, nah, that's always the hard part where it's like, even if you're from a place where you're like, yeah, this is something that I want to like explore away from, it still made you the person who you are today, <laughs> which right. is always like the hardest thing. Um, another track that kind of, that I really liked was 05 Honda, especially as someone who used to drive a 98 Toyota RAV4. I identify with that track. Yeah, um, yeah. What, like, where did that come from in terms of like, because when I first heard it, I was like, I can relate to this in terms of you just me driving literally a car that could break down at any time. But there was something freeing about that. Uh, yeah. I'm 28 I, now. But like, just talk about that. Because I think when I heard that, I was like, I I, I put myself in my old car when I listened to that song. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's damn near my brand to like just play with nostalgia. Like, or like, not <laughs> yeah. nostalgia, like specifically like I guess not 90s nostalgia but just like nostalgic moments like in people's life I feel like we all well for the most part well, generally I ain't gonna say all but generally people who have whips that first the second whip was a shitty whip like so it's like yeah, but, it, but it was the best one that you had somehow. yeah but what you had so it's like you you damn near have some of your best memories with it so it's kind of like I damn near felt like when I was making that song I wanted uh more vibrant something you could dance to type uh song but also it's like I'm damn near like making a comedy film of myself. That's how I feel yeah. about that. Like, how I feel about that song. And I mean, it don't have to, I I'm, I wanted it to be as general and like generic as it could be in, in the sense of the style of the car. Niggas know like about what an 0500 yeah, is. Of course, like, of course. Like them, them type of cars, like them type of cars, like not even just Hondas, like certain things like to put you into that time frame or like regardless of what you're riding in, you know where your destination is. So it's kind of like, yeah. I really want to like push that and it's kind of on those, like it's almost, in a sense, it's liberating that you know this is the beginning and not the end. You know, I think it's a, it's sense. a dark, yeah. your, it, it, or a bittersweet feeling when you at the end of something because I mean, now it's completed, it's done. Like, but versus yeah. like you don't know how the outcome is gonna be, but you you looking forward to it. You know, yeah, especially because when you drive those kind of like beat up cars, like that's kind of like your first taste of like, oh, I can actually kind of move freely. And then you yeah. just like you said, you you know, you in the 05 on the bump and pop, where it's like, all right, I can kind of do anything. And I really yeah. identify with that because it's just like, you know, I probably never whipped corners like I did in a car that probably couldn't turn that hard. <laughs> right, bro. It's just different. It's it, it's just different, you know? <laughs> no, I feel you. And then another song that I kind of really gravitated toward was uh, Nature Signs, where I think it's, I've always appreciated how you've been able to kind of talk about trauma, both from like a mental perspective, a personal perspective in terms of you fighting demons in your own head, you fighting demons with other people but also you being from a slave state in Louisiana that is also fighting demons that are like way older than you. Um, how do you kind of get yourself to write in that place where I think you're kind of talking about something unique to you, but also kind of bring it broader in terms of like a historical perspective. Is that hard to do or kind of what gets your mind in that place? I mean, bro, honestly, it's like when I'm making music in general, I try to be the most I don't know. It's going to sound cliche, but I literally try to be the most free I can be. Like, literally, like, mm -hmm. in real time. I think I make some of my best stuff, like, in real time. Like, when I had that beat, when I heard it, I just kind of, I knew I wanted to speak on how I felt when I heard that beat. Like, I don't know, something about, like, certain chord progressions, I'll be able to storytell, whether it be, like, something that happened in the past, or I can talk about how I felt that day. And I think that day, yeah. I just kind of, I already kind of felt that way. But then I don't know, it's just like, literally, like I told you, like the friend that I, I know that just got arrested or whatever, mm -hmm. I, I I feel, I relate to him. It's them like I manifested what I resonate with right now. Like like in the intro, I'm saying, God forbid my life written by one decision. Like that's just how I started. Yeah. Like that's 
my mind frame. Like, like that's my like same situation here right now. So it's kind of like I try to be in real time how I feel because I think we share a lot in like in the vein of our emotions. Like we share a lot of the mm -hmm. similar as we go through things in life. We just showcase it in different outfits. Like we just we treat right. certain differently but universally we all look the same once we strip the club you know? so yeah i definitely try to be as blunt about how i feel about something that's going on and i had no problem expressing it because I, I don't know this is like therapy for me honestly the yeah. things I, I really want to say i can articulate it in a way where other people can relate to it too so it's like yeah. i was like I'm helping myself i'm helping others you know? yeah because when i first started like sending people your stuff they were like oh like shit this is like really real they're like there's a lot there like it's dense it's complex um and you kind of mentioned the process of kind of like feeling free when you first kind of started rapping did that take time to kind of get to that point of like you know this is actually therapy for me and it's actually helping me personally but also helping others when you were first rapping was there a difference between like you know when you were making stuff in high school and now yeah. or ever since you started rapping did you always feel free or did that take time to kind of get to that like I don't care. I'm just going to say what I need to say. Yeah, I mean, that took time for sure. I mean, because honestly, I ain't never wanted to be a situation where it's like I'm speaking on the situation in a song and it has to see the daylight of a certain family member. And it's not mm -hmm. like, and it's not, and it's in the vein that just benefit me, you know? I ain't never want to yeah. make uh, music that was benefiting me for, like, in real time, I can't portray this life, you know? I right, think. Yeah. My music resonates with people as much as it does because it's like my parents bought my music and like my siblings. Yeah. Bought, I, have, I have two sisters. They bought my music too. And even like my uh, grandmother, she bought my music as well. Like I think I just was able to, I don't know. I think I'm able to articulate myself sonically as I get older, the same way I can speak about how I feel like in day-to-day -day conversation. I mean, I'm 23 right now. I assume by the time I'm like, 26 27 i'm musically and like just mentally i'm gonna be able to just speak yeah. a yeah. certain way like you know speak a certain way or carry myself a certain way so i don't know like i don't really overthink it i try not to overthink it i think in the beginning in the beginning i was more so overthinking how how i just sounded now it's like yeah. when i'm recording a record i'm more I'm so trying to get the vocal inflection of how i feel more than how right. i sound I was trying to get off a certain sound, so I was listening to my shit cringing. Like, I'm like, this is like, kind of, you know, like, it wasn't, I'd say my older shit doesn't hit for me the way it, uh, does, my newest stuff does now, but I know some people from when I was putting stuff out when I was, like, 14, 15, still saying they listened to it. So I was like, yeah. I still had something there. Like, I still had something yeah. there. I always feel like I had something there. I'm just getting better at, I guess, understanding the value and saying less is more you know yeah no yeah because i would say that you're very efficient like you don't really waste words <laughs> when you rap where it's like every word has value and i think um as someone who certainly like writes and does um and used to write poetry do you feel like that has kind of helped you along your writing process because kind of in hearing you i can understand the perspective of like it comes across as if you are actually a poet where like you're not really there's no bar that doesn't feel like it has meaning. You're not just saying something right. just to be like, I have to say this one bar so I can like connect it by rhyme to this. It's like, no, if it doesn't rhyme, I'm gonna keep telling my story. And if it yeah. happens to fit, it fits. So can you talk about like how poetry has kind of either helped you or got you to kind of see a different perspective in terms of your writing? Bro, honestly, like when I grew up, I would watch like, uh, have you ever seen like uh, Black Ice? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like, I used to love, like, I used to love watching his poems, and, like, when I was, like, younger, because this is when I was way younger, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, I resonated with certain poets, like, certain uh spoken word poets, but also, like, I really got into poetry probably when I was, like, six. Like, I had to do a project in uh social studies on Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, like, through that, I just started looking at all of the other poets, like, during the Harlem Renaissance, and then from yeah. there, I was just like, okay, I kind of fuck with poetry. Like, this is, like, it's, like, it's not... I don't have to, because certain certain songs I would like, but I wouldn't like the beats, like when I was little. Yeah. Like, I, my dad would play certain, my dad played a lot of heat, but I'm thinking in that time period, when I was like 2006, are the, are those beats, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the craziest of beats. Nah, you know? yeah, you wouldn't if do I'm that, yeah. Show, if I'm just reading something, I could phrase it in my head, like, okay, this is crazy. Like, I'm more so started appreciating words. I think with poetry, you're kind of, you're there for like the expression of what the words are saying through like the poet, you know? That's why it's not like 
you're not in there dancing. Like you're not yeah. in there. Like you're literally just snapping. You're, you're comprehending. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Plus, I just I don't know. I like conversational things, and I feel like poems are very conversational because it's like yeah. if the, if no one if, if it's not like a spoken word poet performing it, you're just there with your own interpretation of the tone, and you're just reading the words for what they are on the page. You know, which is a beautiful like. You know? Nah, facts. I feel that. Um, last two couple questions I have for you is um, the one track that I kind of kept going back to was um, Diary of a Bad Black Man. Uh, it seems like you, Marco Plus, and Fly Aiken all were just like, you know what, I'm just going to spend 30 seconds and just like go crazy. <laughs> um, what was that? Can you just tell me what it was like collaborating with them on that song? Because it seemed like there was a certain energy and directness and just kind of like, yo, let's just blow this up and like, let's just go right. hard. Because the track is not that long compared to the others, but um, each of you just kind of was like, all right, I got 16 bars and I'm going to like do it to the fullest. It was very direct. So can you talk about working with them and like what the intention was for that song? Because the title fits just like the energy that it brought off. Not that y'all were mad, but it's very like upfront. Y'all didn't waste time. <laughs> yeah, like, nah, bro, appreciate you. Uh, honestly, like I met Fly at um, South By. And, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I met him at South by and then we just had like a we just had like a like a real good comment. Like he he had he performed with uh Pizza Fu and mm -hmm. yeah Fu and Redville. So like I'm I'm cool with Redville and I'm cool and uh E1 he produced a song on uh yeah. the album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like he he be DJing. Yeah, yeah, they've done a lot of stuff together. Yeah, so like he kind E1 kind of set it up. Like he was he was basically telling them about me or whatever, and um through that we just got cool and then like he like, I don't know, he was a man of his word. Like, he was like, bro, like, if there's ever a time, like, you really want me to hop on something, I'll hop on it. Like, cause yeah. we just had, like, a real good conversation. And I wasn't going to send him no boo-boo, but, like, bro, like, and I, I was bumping fly heavy. Like, like. Yeah, I, no, I, see. Him and all the pink like, seafood tapes are still yeah, on repeat. Bro, like, I literally, like, I really don't be tripping on how huge, like, an artist is for me to, like, want to do something with them. Like, I literally am just making music with the people who I always dreamed of making music with. Like, that's just what's yeah. my goal. Like, you know, like, I always wanted to make a song with them. And I feel like this was the, this was the one. Like, I feel like with his tone and those chords, yeah. Yeah. I can hear it. Like, I can hear it. Like, I just, I can hear it. And then same with Marco. I know I wanted to have another song with Marco. And, like, we be having, like, I really fuck with Marco heavy. Like, he'll just be calling me. We'll just be, like, I don't know, pushing each Shout other Stuff. Like I really like he's a genuine like homie. I said like, he's like a genuine homie. So majority of the time I be wanting to make more songs with him, but I know like the value and when I do make something with him, it's a special thing. Like it's like I feel like yeah. it's a, like it's a special moment. So that's kind of how I like came together. I sent it to Fly first. He hopped on it. Then I sent it to uh Marco and then Marco hit me up like bro, this is like one of some of my favorite verses I did in like a little minute type shit, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, like it was he was at the studio, like it was a while. No, nah, I feel you. Um, do you feel like, obviously, like this project into a dark warrior, like, you know, this is like your second studio album, even though you have tons of mixtapes and all that stuff. So do you feel like this project and the, based on like the reception that you've got, do you think this kind of marks the continuing of what you've already built? Um, or do you feel like this kind of marks a new kind of thing for you? I mean, it seems like it's blowing up unlike anything ever has. So do you all feel right. like this is just kind of like, I'm just doing me and I'm gonna keep doing it? Or do you feel like to you, does this moment feel different? in kind of like the week since it's come out? I mean, like, I am noticing, like, this is the quickest it's gotten this mm -hmm. attention. But I, I'm grateful because, I mean, honestly, like, I feel like I put in the work to yeah, the no. point where I should, get, I, should get the, I should get the result back eventually. But I also, I don't get I don't get caught in looking at something like, okay, this is going crazy, this is going crazy, this is going crazy. But in that time, I'm not working on my craft and I'm not networking and meeting people to help me expand my craft, like, I feel like I had to take two in stride and just take it in stride because I understand what I what my goal is, like what my like overall goal is from this. And it's like it's to have like I want my kids, kids, kids eating off of my words. That's my yeah, goal. No. Like until I get to that, I'm I don't see myself slowing down. If anything, it's like my ball crazy. Like I literally like I <laughs> I probably won't make my next project is probably not gonna be this long, but it's like I wanted to, you know, make my presence felt that I could make a long traditional album. That's what the goal was for this, you know. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, one thing I also really appreciated um, was just the visuals that you was dropping, where I think they were very, like, concise. They felt kind of retro, but they were also really clear. And it's kind of like the thing that I have, where it's like the image that I have of the video 
made sense when I watched it or like listening to the song, you kind of paint a picture that comes across in the video. So how was it like just kind of making the videos and, you know, actually being involved and kind of saying like, no, I want to shoot this or I want to do this. I want me and my homies to do this. Can you just share a little bit of insight to what that's like? Because clearly you put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. Like, honestly, I, uh, I mean, I, I can attribute it to like when I was a child, I really thrived in like, I don't know, like just anything artistic. I would thrive in like getting deep in the research of it. So it's like mm -hmm. I I, just, I I can say I'm a great researcher of like the arts just in general, like regardless of what the medium is. Like I just like and when I was young, like when when Google was getting first popping and we could look, <laughs> you was just up, going. I would dig, like I would just dig and like I don't know, just like get more well versed on what I liked and why I liked it. Like I want to know both sides versus just the visual side, you know. So I was kind of like with these videos, I wanted to portray like the visual images to this point that I never got to get off because of a lack of resource. So I was like, I knew yeah. I had more resources this time. I want to actually speak on something years from now. I'll be proud of and years from now. I think, okay, I hope we have changed these elements and we've gotten through this. So like it's grown, you know, we've progressed or whatever. So I trying to make like a conscious effort to leave like, you know, cool little Easter eggs. Like, yeah. and just like, like I wanted my style to be prevalent. Like I want people to know this is a, this is a Wakai video. Like if you watch yeah. it, like it comes from me, you know. Same with the beats. Like I want to think like this is a Wakai beat, you know. Yeah, no, in fact. So I think um, that's honestly all the questions I had. I think um, where can people follow you, or and more generally, like what's next? I mean, you don't really wait that long for you drop projects. You kind of right. keep your foot on the gas. So <laughs> tell people where to follow you at, or just how to get at you. What's coming up next? Any shows? Now's the time. Please just tell folks where to get at you. Yeah, you can find me at Wakai007 everywhere, like TikTok, Twitter, everywhere. Same, just Wakai on YouTube. And honestly, you're just going to see a tour come. That's what we're working on right now. We're trying to put together a tour. You're going to see some more videos for show. Like, I'm going to try to – the emphasis is on the videos. Like, I want to keep showing people videos. So, yeah, I might get, like, another video. And I also have, like, a mini documentary. I'm just trying to oh, see okay. if I want to premiere. Like, I want to see if I want to premiere somewhere, or if I just want to like release it. But that's what we got coming, and I'm gonna try to keep pushing the album. I think this is a slow burner. This is a slow burner album. I yeah. think as the season changes from the summer, I think a lot of people will start to appreciate the project for what it is. You know? No, nah, I think so too. Um, well, Wakai, we appreciate you for coming on, especially the week. <laughs> of the album is still less than a week old or your newest baby as you said so we appreciate you for coming on uh continued success it will always be a, it will always be a fan bro thank you thank you appreciate you having me on bro